so now moving on to apraxia apraxia is inability to perform certain skill purposeful movements in the absence of loss of motor power sensation or coordination due uh, apraxia is usually due to difficulty in motor planning and sequencing it results from injury to either or both hemispheres uh, two or more types of apraxia can usually occur together so apraxia is very funny and it is very important to find out that uh, the patient is having apraxia otherwise we would get ending uh, uh, get frustrated like why is the apraxia which are verbal motor idiomotor ideational the first four the verbal motor idiomotor and ideational they could hinder our uh, i uh, like it they are important as of now because they can uh, come in the way of our comprehension assessment so when we are assessing for comprehension we should be aware that the patient is not suffering the with first four apraxia let's know more about them verbal apraxia verbal apraxia is difficulty in forming and organizing intelligible words or sounds although the musculature required to do the same is intact it is also known as apraxia of speech it may use uh, tongue for automatic so uh, the patient may use tongue for automatic movement we would uh, he would do a lot of things when you are not really telling them to do but when you tell them to open their mouth stick their tongue out take it up take it down they will not listen to you but on the contrary if you just put a if you put some honey or something of that sort they like they'll just stick their tongue out and lick it so that is how you find out okay the patient is having verbal apraxia it is it occurs due to uh, motor planning which is most affected in this basically the patient has an idea he has a concept but he is not able to produce the sound required to make the word so the lesion is frontal lobe of left hemisphere now uh, motor idiomotor and ideational apraxia okay so in these automatic simple motor task that is when you are not telling patient to do anything the patient is able to perform a simple motor activity such as uh, lift, uh, lifting their hand up or touching the head the patient would do that automatically but will not do it when uh, you are tell them so that is the purposeful motor task on command and sequencing that is when you ask a patient to uh, touch their head if the patient is having motor apraxia he will not do it if the patient is having idiomotor apraxia he will not do it if the patient is having ideational apraxia he will not do it in on the contrary if you don't say anything and you just observe the patient if something itches or if he has some need he will touch his head uh, he will touch his head by himself when he is having motor or idiomotor apraxia the kinesthetic memory patterns are absent in motor but are present in idiomotor apraxia uh, concept understanding is present both in motor and idiomotor apraxia so the patient knows what is to be the patient is aware what is to be done what it is used for but still can't do it in this for the motor apraxia the lesion is in precentral gyrus of the frontal lobe of either either hemisphere for idiomotor apraxia the lesion is in parietal lobe of dominant hemisphere or supramarginal gyrus ideational apraxia is when the concept of understanding itself is absent the patient is not aware of what it is what he has to do anything at all and he will not even move the hand even on automatic simple motor task he will not do it for anything he will not even do a purposeful movement like uh, if you keep a pen and paper in front of a patient of motor and idiomotor apraxia at least they might have an idea what it is used for but they wouldn't they might describe okay you take it you do this you do that they will keep on talking about it but they wouldn't do the action per se so that is what uh, is, so in comprehension as i said you tell them you tell the patient to move their tongue up and down but if the patient is having verbal apraxia he wouldn't really do it 
again for uh, if the if you tell the patient to raise their hands up and they don't do it that does not mean the comprehension is not intact it could be that the patient is having idiomotor or motor apraxia so to test for all these apraxia there is a battery of tests there is praxis test there is good good glass praxis test a lot of tests are available which could be done to get an idea uh, what exactly the patient is going through now uh, just to touch up constructional apraxia it is an impairment in producing designs of 2d or 3d by copying drawing or constructing whether upon command or spontaneously the lesion is usually in occipital lobe of either hemisphere dressing apraxia that is inability to dress oneself because of a disorder in body scheme or spatial relation mistakes of orientation in donning clothes upside down or inside out happens usually constructional and dressing apraxia could occur together so the importance why is it important for us as a therapist to know what the patient is going like for example why uh, why should we find out that the patient is having aphasia importantly because uh, when the patient is diagnosed early if the treatment is started early the uh, as we have in even in physiotherapy uh, the stroke recovery is maximum in first initial days similarly it has been found that aphasia when treated early it has has good treatment effects and the patient recovers maximum in initial 2 to 3 months the next important thing is to plan and execute our own therapeutic goals like we could coordinate with speech therapist initially if the patient is having massive stroke he's having a tracheostomy then the physiotherapy goal is to keep chest clear improve respiration muscles improve the uh strength of respiration improve the lung volume depending on the stage of uh, depending of the stage of uh, patient like it, whether it is an acute or subacute condition the goals uh, change and also like if the patient is having a uh, praxia or if he is having kinesthetic issues if he is not understanding auditory symbols then we can use all the other like as the auditory comprehension is uh, affected then how am i supposed to tell the patient if i if i keep on giving instruction the patient will not understand anything because his comprehension the auditory comprehension is fully affected at this time if i know that the comprehension of auditory symbols is affected i could use other methods for uh, for him to get my exercises done i could make use of visual stimuli such as imitation i could make use of kinesthetic stimuli to make him do fine motor activities and get the work done so that is why it is important for us as physiotherapists to identify uh, where the patient stands so that we can progress our treatment and modulate it accordingly i am done thank you asra will take over now